Welcome to Saber TV, episode nine. I'm Jackson Coyle. I'm Brett Schultz. There's a problem at Sartell High School nowadays. A chronic problem. People are just getting full fruits on their trays. Like not apples them. and bananas. Exactly, yeah. like, like this banana. You. Yeah, dug that out of the garbage can, whole. And they're just throwing them away whole, wasting, wasteful. Okay, check it out. Chronic food wasting is the issue. Will you choose to make a difference? Hi, this is Broccoli Zero Saber TV, and I'm here to interview Brenda Brawlick today about our chronic food wasting here at Sark. Well, we really didn't know how much was being wasted until we started the food recycling program where we started um, collecting food in the recycling bins for a local pig farmer in St. Francis. Um, initially when we started, it was in the upper 20s. Then we got down to 22 barrels per month. Then we got it down to 19 barrels a month. And the latest figure as of last spring, I don't have the, the figures for this fall yet. Um, because they haven't sent me the, the invoicing yet, but um, we had six, we were down to 16 barrels a month, so we've we've made progress in that. How so I'm really excited food about is that. Actually, like in a barrel. A lot, I'd say. Oh yeah, it's a full garbage can. I'd say at least 200 pounds, two 250. I'd say fresh fruit. Um, I see a lot of um, apples, bananas whole fruit that's going into the garbage and uh, I did a quick calculation just with the whole fruit um, and vegetables alone that's probably going to be between 350 and 450 dollars a week that we I mean that's a rough estimate that we're just throwing out needlessly mm -hmm. why because anytime we waste uh, food that could be consumed um, you know obviously it's a cost to that and I guess, you know, we're not here to feed the pigs, we're here to feed students. And so I guess my, my vision and goal would be that um, students would take what they plan to eat and, you know, not waste any food. How does it directly affect our school? Well, anytime we have waste involved in any area, any aspect of a building of our school district, you know, it has an impact, impact on costs to students and their parents. Um, so you know that's the impact I think awareness awareness of you know that's one of the things that w was a byproduct of doing the food recycling was by separating it separating the food out from the paper garbage we were able to see the the actual amount of food that was be wa being wasted and we really weren't aware of that before because um, the visual of actually seeing it is just um, unbelievable and so our goal is to really reduce that you know I think it's um, last year was a little bumpy um, students um, were kind of wondering why should I buy into this and what's in it for me um, and and you know trying to decide whether they wanted to participate or not and separate the food from the the paper supplies and things but I think this year, um, the, you know, students recognize the value of being green and being proactive. And also, I think students recognize that, um, you know, how much food is being wasted. And I think they're really working to stop that waste. Obviously, we've gone down, you know, a lot of barrels per month. So that's good. You know, I, I think it's like anything. Um, the more you can get the word out, the, the better because multiple messages to inform people, you know, maybe the first round 10% listen, the next round 20% listen, you know, I think it just needs to be communicated frequently and um, uh, for people to be aware. I don't know if you guys have noticed the big old bottles in the hallway, those are actually to put other bottles into. It's kind of like Inception, but yeah. we already used that joke. Bottles so. inside of bottles. Yeah. Yeah. Let's Check show a video out. about it.
Don't you know this is recycling? Bottles and cans only, no paper. Sorry. It's okay, next time remember. Good morning, it's, I'm Michelle, this is Gabe. We're, we're, we're your uh, recycling team in school uh, here. Garbage going into there, or is it mostly recycling, or how are we doing on it? Well, first of all, we appreciate um, the support that we've gotten from most of the people, because they've been really good about getting their bins out. It's just a, the, the worst part of it is, um, the problem that we're having actually is that with the black bins right here. And that's an aluminum plastic one and you can only put in like number one and number two plastic. It cannot be something like this. You have to look at the bottom. The other blue bin is for um, just strictly paper only. And we have our days that we do that. You know, that we uh, pick up. What we're putting in there is that how we can help and limit yep. it? <clears throat> we are now labeling the tops of them too so that you know we, people might have not seen the bottom of uh, sides of them. But now we're right on top of them and we're putting, telling you specifically what to put in there. Um, we've noticed that in picking up, most of the stuff has been like 50% you know, of just waste like candy wrappers, um, you know, paper and stuff that are not supposed to be in the aluminum plastic bins. And that's where we really need What's your help. What's the purpose of like special ed, like doing, and they, they kind of like do this recycling program, right? Yes, they do the black bins and they come, um, they come like on Tuesdays and they collect all the aluminum and the plastics and they actually go through all of it and they're collecting the money um, for Wakosa. Well, the garbage is way in there. I don't know how you're gonna get it out. Can you reach it? Oh. <laughs> I can't. Let me see if I can get it. Watch out. I can't reach it. This is in trouble. Oh, jeez. Okay, come grab. Wait, wait. Oh, I almost fell over. It's November. You know what that means? Thanksgiving or... Nope. Beards. No Shave November isn't just fun and games. The purpose of No Shave November ranges from showing off beard growing abilities to raising money for charity. It is quite an event around Sartell High School and has been celebrated for the past few years. What is No Shave November? Well, if there ever was a month uh, in the given year that was a man month, it would be November. I know that it's the month uh, of November that you don't shave during. Uh, I know it's where you don't shave anything uh, in the whole month of November. Uh, well, I remember when I was a sophomore it started and basically what you do is don't shave for November. Why do you choose to participate in No Shave November? Well, I'm pretty hairy so I just do it because it's fun. Because I can grow a sick beard. I don't know, it's just kind of a fun, interesting thing to do. You just throw it out, you know, just some spice things up. Um, most of the year I am I am controlled and refined by the razor like most other men um, but I feel like November is a chance for for men to break away from that that limitation that society puts on us that we have to be clean shaven and uh, it's also an emotional shield for me it protects me from from uh, some of the harsh realities I can I can hide behind it it's my my wall how is the beard coming? 
pretty good. It makes me feel manly. Well, I, hope, I wish it was a little bit better, but uh, you know, it's growing. I still got two weeks left, so we'll see. You tell me, it's coming along nice. Well, I got a little bit of a late start, and it's, it's certainly not a, a Luke Walker, that's for sure. But um, I'm confident by the end of November, with a little bit of trimming and attention, it's going to be uh, substantial. Hey, Brett, have you ever seen the show, That 70s Show? Of course. Who's your favorite character? Fez. Do you know what Fez stands for? No, I really don't. Foreign exchange student, and we have a video of an interview of a foreign exchange student. Hey, this is Haley from Saber TV 2.0. Um, I'm just setting up for an interview with Monica, a foreign exchange student from this year, and Megan Reck, who's a representative from the La Saber newspaper. Uh, this interview is just meant to introduce Monica, welcome her to our student body, and let everybody get to know her a little bit better. Hi, Monica. Hi. How are you? I'm good. What about you? I'm pretty good. <laughs> good. Um, what country are you from? From Slovakia. That's awesome. Uh, what do your parents do back home for a job? Um, they are economists. What are economists? So they work with money. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> How many siblings do you have? I have one sister older. What's her name? Uh, Lucia. Oh, cute. Are there any sports or hobbies that you do back home? Oh, I ski in okay. the winter. Oh, so they have like mountains and stuff like that? Yes, like oh. high tetras. Oh, I'm scary. Okay, oh, uh, how did you become a foreign exchange student? Um, uh, my sister was here like four years ago. Oh, sweet. Was she at the same school? Yeah. Oh, I bet that's kind of cool. Uh, was it an easy or difficult process? Um, I had to take a test or something oh, really? to get here. And I have to have like some points. So, so was the test hard? Or, like, did you have to study for it? Uh, not really. No? <laughs> it's the obvious stuff? Yeah. Uh, who is your host family right now? Uh, Sue and Denheim. Oh, fun. Um, what differences have you found between the USA and your home? Oh, uh, they have like, you have a bigger things there, like mm -hmm. in stores and cars. And you don't use knife when you eat, <laughs> like oh. only fork, you know. Oh yeah, <laughs> you guys use knives and forks? Yes. <laughs> well, with steak we use knives, I guess. Yeah. Some people use their hands, <laughs> but... <laughs> uh, and then you said that you're a senior? Yes. Oh, sweet. If you want to know what any of the other um, foreign exchange students had to say about these questions or what their answers were, um, you can check out the article Megan wrote about this uh, in the Little Saber newspaper. Did you miss an episode or want to see one again but don't know how? Go to youtube.com and search Sartell K-12. To go to the Sartell page, click on the Sartell K-12 hyperlink and it will bring you right to the page. All the Saber TV episodes can be found under uploads on the sidebar. Or you can go to the school's website and click on the YouTube button, which will bring you right to the page. You know, I used to play basketball when I was younger. That's cool. Yeah, I quit, though. Oh, that kind of sucks. I guess that, that's happened a lot now. We don't really have any seniors on our team anymore. Yeah, I heard it. We have, like, one of the youngest teams, like, ever in Sartell. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't really know anything about it, but we got this video on it, I guess. Yeah, so... Bowling! 2011 Sartell High School basketball may be seeing their youngest basketball squad yet. We talked to both the senior basketball captain, Zach Jiskra, and the head coach to get to the bottom of this story. So we're here with the senior captain of the senior basketball team, Zach Jiskra. Why do you think there is a low amount of seniors going out for the team? Um, I'd have to say because the other basketball players, they kind of lost interest in the sport and uh, they wanted to focus more on playing football. So, what do you think about the team? How can we become better as a cohesive unit? Um, I'd say that if um, players got to have each other's backs, um, people, if there's problems, they got to talk to each other and um, we just got to play as a team, not as an individual. What do you think um, will get us more crowd, like have a larger crowd attended? Um, really, it's just, we just got to win. Um, we have a lot of exciting players. Um, it's going to be a fast-paced 
game this year and looking forward to it. After filming the open gym game between Whitney League and the varsity team and interviewing the senior basketball captain Zach Jiskera, we went to talk to the head coach Dave Angel. Why do you think, um, how do many players um, that are seniors are actually going out for the team? Well, we know we have uh, one of our captains this year is a senior, Zach Jiskra, and he's been with us all the way through. And, uh, you know, there'll probably be a few more seniors. There probably won't be a lot. Um, many times, especially in basketball, we only get to play, uh, you know, five guys at a time. Juniors becoming seniors, they know the guys around them and how good other players are. And, and a lot of times you get seniors that realize that I'm probably not going to get to play a lot this year as a senior. And, and really the way the game has become now, uh, you know, there's, there, you can't play seniors on JV, so they kind of see that, well, there's maybe not a lot of time I'm going to get to play, and they maybe decide to do something else during the winter, and, and, and that's fine. Last thing we got for you is a preview for a documentary by our own Ricky Stang. He, uh, it's, come, it's in the works. It's coming soon. Um, it's about band. You know, I used to be in band, actually. Played percussion. That's cool. Yep. That's real cool. Mm -hmm. All right, well, then you'll, you'll like this, then. I will. Right, everybody, that's it for Saber TV 2.0, episode 8. That's 9. 9. Yeah. Check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash sartellk12. Or just go to our school website and click on the YouTube thing, subscribe. Still only 55 of you. Yeah. I don't it's kind of disappointing. I don't know what that's about. Yeah. All right, see you guys later.